Hi, and welcome back to the course Agricultural and Biosystem Structures Engineering. This is lecture number two, and the topic is on codes and standards. Now, this is a design uh, course on structures uh, and as applied to, to the agricultural and biosystems uh, structures in, in the Philippines. Thus, it is important to take into consideration the, the code uh, that encompasses this, this design and construction or the design and development of structures. Now, the, the very fundamental code that uh, this structure should be adhering to okay, besides, okay, because these are legal in, 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 in precept or concept. So it's important that, um, well, besides the design component, which involves a lot of technical and uh, computational um, basis. This is a legal basis, though the the national building code. And it, since we the the structure would be uh, demanded to to support or or be a a a um, a location to to um, to um, uh, contain okay, animals and plants and even people, it is important that the safety of this this uh, resources and uh, particular lives of, of this um, beings be be um, be ensured okay the safety of this should be ensured now uh, what is this national building code this is the the code that the construction and development or the design construction and development and up to the demolition phase of a structure should be adhering to okay uh, and this was instituted in the late 70s by the uh, former president Mark Ferdinand E. Marcos and revised throughout the years. The, there's a, an accompanying implementing rules and regulations. There's a difference between the two. This is the uh, presidential decree itself um, and revised through the years. I think the late, latest version is in 2004. Okay, uh, It has to be checked. Anyway, I, I, uh, I am not very keen on dates and uh but, but i'm keen on details uh, uh particularly in this kind of um code which again since it's a code it is required to be followed okay uh section 103 of this code identifies the scope and application the provisions of this code okay i'm just going to read it uh, verbatim uh, the provisions of this code shall apply to the design, location, siting, construction, alteration, repair, conversion, use, occupancy, maintenance, moving, demolition of, and addition to public and private buildings and structures, except traditional indigenous family dwellings as defined herein. You can see from, uh, we can understand from this um, section 103.103a uh, that this covers the life cycle of a build of, of, of buildings and structures so from 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 the design phase up to its demolition demolition um demolition phase or demolition activity okay when the, when the building has uh served its life or useful life uh, economic life it has to be dem demolished okay uh next is buildings and or structures constructed before the approval of this code shall not be affected thereby except when alterations, additions, conversions, or repairs are to be made therein, in which case this code shall apply only to portions to be altered, added, converted, or repaired. That is the clause that uh, exempts um, structures built before the approval of this code. Okay. Uh, this, are just, this is just a portion of the, the code. Okay. And uh, as we go through okay, uh, in this discussion, the, the whole code did not be discussed, but um, very significant portions of it are to be um, detailed, okay? particularly the progress, uh, the, the, the way that it should be understood and how uh, a re the reader, because it's a very, uh, very thick code. You know? It's a very thick book that one is actually going to refer to when um, in the design phase, okay? or whenever there is um, an activity involving construction of uh, and the development of um buildings and structures now section 104 defines the general building requirements buildings and or structures constructed before the approval of this code should not be affected 
thereby except when alterations, additions, conversions, or repairs are to be made or in, in which case this code shall apply. Okay. So buildings or structures intend to be used for the manufacture and or production of any kind of article or product shall observe adequate environmental safeguards. Buildings or structures and all parts thereof, as well as, as all facilities, found in shall be maintained in safe, sanitary, and wor good working condition. That is the general building requirements uh, identified in the code. Now, uh, since this is a code, okay, this should be followed. There should be a control, and there is a what you call a permit. And this rests on the uh, the, the the there is a personnel personnel okay, the, the office uh, the, the building official. Uh, in the office of the building of official in the LGU, okay, the local government unit, we have the cities, municipalities, uh, there's, uh, there's other LGUs. Uh, the permits should be, okay, prior to uh, design, the development, and construction, a, a, or particularly construction, uh, there should be a permit for the building to be constructed, okay. The applicant shall file an application, therefore, in writing and on the prescribed form, okay, there are permit. Uh, forms uh, that would grant you a permit. Uh, these are instituted by the Office of the Building Official. Every application shall provide at least the following information as, as desired, a description of the work to be covered by the permit applied for, certified true copy of the PCT covering the uh, lot in which the proposed work is to be done if the applicant is not regi the registered owner. In addition to the CT TCT, a copy of the contract shall be submitted. Again, the agricultural and biosystems engineer is limited to agricultural lands. Again, there are, there are different classifications of lands, okay, from uh, particularly the alienable disposable lands, they could be industrial, they could be agricultural or commercial. Uh, and, and the ABE um, is, is, uh, has, uh, has, has functional abilities in the agricultural land classifications. The use of or, or occupancy of for which the proposal is intended is also required and the estimated cost of the proposed work. To be submitted together with such application or at least five sets of corresponding plans and specifications, that is now a seven sheet uh, plan, actually, uh, prepared, signed, and sealed by a duly registered mechanical engineer in case of mechanical plans and by a registered electrical engineer in case of electrical plans, except in those cases exempted or not required by the building official of the under this code. Uh, for ABEs, okay, they are uh, there to sign all of these plans altogether. Now, as to the certificate of the occupancy, this is section 309. And um, just before we end this discussion, actually, on the code, okay, the certificate of occupancy would grant the the the, the occupants, okay, the, the the permission to to occupy the space. No building or structure shall be used or occupied and no change in the existing use or occupancy classification of a building or structure or portion thereof shall be made until the building official has issued a certificate of occupancy therefore as provided in this code. If it's a residential unit, a residential unit, it is separate and distinct from a commercial unit. If it's a hotel, it's different from a hospital and they should be uh, classified uh, accordingly. A certificate of occupancy shall be issued by the building official within 30 days if after final inspection and submittal of a certificate of completion referred to in the preceding section, it is found that the building or structure complies with the provisions of this code. The certificate of occupancy shall be posted or displayed in a conspicuous place, okay, uh, in an easily locate, uh, located location easily located location on the premises and shall not be removed except upon order of the building official, the non-issuance, suspension, and revocation of certificates of occupancy and the procedure for appeal, their form shall be governed in so far as applicable by the provisions of section 306 and 307 of this code. The code, okay, uh, the, the very important aspects of this code is are, are already highlighted and it actually is a, it is a very long code. And here is a list of its contents. We've only tackled uh, the general uh, portions of the uh, sections in the general provisions, administration and enforcement, permits and inspection. If you could, if you'd notice uh, the numbers are uh, begin from, uh, are three digits, three digits the, 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 the numbers of the sections. The first number is actually the, the main number of that. Uh, for example, 109 is under general provisions because it starts with one. 
while the uh, the last one we talked about certificate of occupancy which is 309 is actually under permits and exp in exp expansion and it's number nine of that um, main category okay so other portions are also defined here uh, I mean uh, uh, defined and discussed okay and specified uh, as code so this should be followed um, um, in 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 but heart mind, mind body and soul okay you have the types of construction, construction, the requirements of fire zones, the fire resistant requirements in construction, classification, and general requirements of all buildings by use or occupancy. Again, different types would have different um, classif um, classifications and requirements. You have your light and ventilation. Um, in, in other countries, this is actually a, a very, very critical aspect. In fact, they are, um, they have um, different codes for light and even for ventilation. You have your sanitation, uh, building pro projection over public streets, uh, protection of pedestrians during construction or demolition, general design and construction requirements, electrical and mechanical regulations, photographic and x-ray films. Uh, number 15 is prefabricated construction. Plastics, uh, they, they are dedicated a, 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 a chapter. Sheet metal paint, uh, sheet, sheet metal paint spray boots. You have glass and glazing, okay? the use of computers, science, and lastly, transitory and final provisions. There are, again, corresponding IRRs on this, uh, implementing rules and regulations that would actually put the, the law into place because this is a presidential decree and revised later on, okay? the, the implementing rules. Now, uh, we're talking about codes. Now we proceed to standards. And in standards, okay, these are well. It's, it's different with codes in that the standards are are recommendatory. Okay. Uh, well, specifically in this uh, standards, there are portions which um, have this um, mandate mandatory requirements, such as those that are uh, within um, sentences that have the word shall. But in part, uh, but but generally standards are more of recommendatory in nature. And that's why these are just standards. If it's below standard, it's substandard. Uh, the standard is the, the allowable, okay? That could um, in, enable or entail that a, a structure is indeed um, in a good working operating condition. So if it's below standard, it's substandard, it might fail uh, and should be, um, made or remade to um, comply with the standards. So you have your scope. Okay, these are just the portions of a, a standard scope. Okay, these are the standard specifications, scopes, terms, and definitions, classification, fabrication requirements, performance uh, requirements, safety, workmanship, and finish, and then warranty, maintenance, and operation, sampling, testing, marking, and labeling. Then you have your Standard methods of test covers the scope, the general conditions for test, the test preparation, the pretest observations, performance test, laboratory analysis, presentation of results, uh, and then you have your formula, and then you have your test report format. The standard specifications identifies the the, the portions of the structure, for example, that are needs that needs um, uh, that needs to be identified and then specified, and then you have the standards method, method standard methods of test. To test those those uh, specified um, um, specifications or, or identified specifications. Okay. Let's go to a sample um, sample standard. This is for uh, farm to market roads. Okay, and again, you have your contents. Okay, as identified, those are. Um, those are generic. And here you have your materials and construction by government. And then you have your definitions first, your, your references. And then uh, you have your um, uh, definitions. And then you have your specifics okay, for your design considerations, like um, recommendatory uh, provisions that would identify uh, the standards itself. Okay, for example, roads shall provide adequate and efficient route within the road influence area. So 
it, it it's it doesn't identify the exact um, values but it's it's more of generic but um identifying a a a specific uh item of requirement and with the word shall it means it should be always followed unlike if it should be a must or or uh, should okay Okay, road connections should follow the road hierarchy to avoid road usage beyond its design ADP. Okay, now all of this okay, comprise a standard, and then there's going to be a method of test later on. Uh, at times, it would have a uh, the, the, the numerical or the, the values that would entail uh, standard specifications requirements, and um, that would identify actually the uh the very important uh portions that a, an engineer would need to design construct and develop a certain uh, construction uh, structure such as this farm to market road uh, again uh codes and standards are there to help out uh the engineer the abe to um to uh, abide with the uh, VGAD and the technical specifications. I'll see you in the next lecture, which is on um, the design of uh, well, the specific uh, topic on design, uh, the design phase of construction. And we'll go to the live loads and dead loads computations. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next lecture.